the Galaxy Z Flip 3 is one of the best foldable phones you can buy right now. In fact, it might be the best foldable phone, period. But is it perfect? Absolutely not. There are a lot of improvements Samsung could make, and I'm hoping to see them in the Galaxy Z Flip 4. The Z Flip 3's larger cover screen and lower price make it feel much more like a normal phone, but it still has the convenience and wow factor you can only get with a foldable device. But there's always room for improvement. With the Z Flip 4 expected to be announced soon, here's my wish list of features I want to see. Better battery life, an even larger cover screen, and more software that takes advantage of the Z Flip's foldable design are at the top of my wish list. Will Samsung address these concerns? We'll probably find out on August 10th during the next Unpacked event. CNET will be covering the event and we'll be breaking down everything Samsung announces, so get subscribed if you don't want to miss those videos. In the meantime, here are the features I want to see in the Galaxy Z Flip 4. Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 3 is impressive from both an engineering and a design standpoint. But it's not just about looks. The foldable screen has some practical use cases, too. It's easier to fit in your pocket or purse when closed. You can also capture group photos when no one's around to take them by keeping the display propped open halfway. And of course, it just looks cool. But I don't know if these benefits are enough to make the case for buying a foldable phone, at least not for everyone. What Samsung and other foldable phone makers really need is a killer app, software that shows what the Z Flip can do that other phones can't. Samsung is off to a good start, but I want to see more. The best example of this yet is the way the Z Flip 3's camera can function as a camera and a tripod combo thanks to its hinge. Just open up the camera, Fold the hinge halfway and set the Galaxy Z Flip down on a surface. That's definitely something you can't do with a regular phone. There are also some pretty cool multitasking features on the Z Flip 3. You can open multiple apps in floating windows or view apps in split screen mode. But Samsung has been offering features like these for years, so it's not necessarily the best way to show what makes the Z Flip unique. The coolest thing about the Galaxy Z Flip 3 is that it can fold in half so Samsung should make it more useful when it's closed. The Galaxy Z Flip 3's cover screen is a major improvement over the original. It's a lot bigger, which means it's actually readable, unlike the tiny pill-shaped screen on the first version. You can see notifications, the weather, upcoming calendar events, and a music player without opening the phone. There are also several different clock styles to choose from, and you can even add or change these widgets without flipping open the device. Other things you can do from the cover screen include using Samsung Pay and managing the cover screen's display display brightness. That's a lot, but I think there's plenty of potential for Samsung to do even more. I'd like to see a slightly larger screen and even more widgets and customization options to go along with it, especially since other companies have upgraded the lock screens on their own phones recently. Apple's iOS 16 update introduces new widgets for the lock screen, for example. Google also added the ability to see who's at your door from your Pixel phone's lock screen if you own a Nest security camera. With that in mind, I'd like to see Samsung add even more functionality to the Z Flip's cover screen. It's not the same as the lock screen, but it serves some of the same purposes. Like the lock screen on a regular phone, the Z Flip's cover screen is usually the first thing you see when you pick it up. Maybe Samsung can take a page from its Galaxy Watch and add more glanceable widgets to the cover screen. Quick settings for managing Bluetooth accessories or putting the phone in airplane mode could also be useful to have on the cover screen. The cover screen can also serve as a camera viewfinder for taking selfies when the phone is closed, another good reason why Samsung should increase its size. As for the interior screen, I wish the crease running across the middle of the display was less noticeable. It's not always very visible, but you can definitely feel it when swiping up and down. There are a lot of great things about the Galaxy Z Flip 3, but battery life isn't one of them. With the screen's refresh rate set to high and the brightness set to 80%, my colleague Patrick Holland only got about 11 hours out of the Galaxy Z Flip 3 when he reviewed it. That's barely enough to make it through a whole day, so I'm hoping that changes with the Galaxy Z Flip 4. Smaller phones tend to have shorter battery life, as I experienced when switching from the larger Galaxy S22 Plus to the petite Galaxy S22. But since the Galaxy Z Flip 3 has a screen that's around the same size as the S22 Plus when opened, I'd expect its battery life to be on the longer side. 
The Galaxy Z Flip 3 could also use a boost when it comes to charging speed. It can only charge at a rate of up to 15 watts, while the Galaxy S22 has 25 watt charging. This seems like a no-brainer upgrade for the next Z Flip. The Galaxy Z Flip 3 is a lot of fun to take photos with, thanks to its foldable design. Now, it just needs a better camera. The Galaxy Z Flip 3 has a 12 megapixel wide camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. For most people, that's probably enough. But for $1,000, I'd like to see a third telephoto lens too. When Patrick reviewed the Z Flip 3, which you can watch here, he said this is a camera system you'd probably expect to see on a $700 phone. But Samsung does have a history of bringing qualities from its more expensive phones down to cheaper devices. So I'm hoping it takes that same approach with its next foldable flip phone too. The Galaxy Z Fold 3, which opens and closes like a book, has a tablet sized screen inside. And that phone is rumored to get a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main sensor, just like the Galaxy S22. Perhaps Samsung will do the same for its next Galaxy Z Flip. $1,000 is expensive for a phone, but it's actually on the cheaper side for a foldable phone. Samsung's other foldable phone, the Galaxy Z Fold 3, usually costs about $1,800 without a trade-in and when it's not on sale. The second-gen Motorola Razr, another flip phone kind of similar to the Z Flip 3, costs $1,400 without a trade-in. The Galaxy Z Flip 3's $1,000 price is a step in the right direction. But if Samsung does make improvements to the camera, cover display, and battery life, I'm hoping it doesn't raise the price too. There are also so many compelling non-foldable phones hitting the market for well under $1,000 right now, like the Pixel 6a and Galaxy A53, both of which cost $450. A competitively priced Z Flip could be just what Samsung needs to make foldables more appealing to a broader audience, especially at a time when interest in foldable phones is already growing. Shipments of foldable phones increased by about 264% in 2021, compared to 2020, and that's according to the International Data Corporation. Samsung also claims that almost 10 million foldable phones were shipped globally last year. That still pales in comparison to shipments of standard smartphones, but the growth shows that foldables are starting to appeal to more than just early adopters and tech enthusiasts. Samsung is the leader when it comes to foldable phones, but it could face even more competition soon. Motorola recently teased a new version of its Razer flip phone on the popular Chinese social network Weibo. That's a big deal because the Razer is the Galaxy Z Flip's biggest competitor right now. TCL also created a foldable flip phone that looked very similar to the Galaxy Z Flip, but the company ultimately scrapped that device. However, TCL showed new foldable and rollable phone concepts in February, proving it's not done yet. If TCL does ever release a foldable phone, it wants to sell it for $700 or less. Google is also rumored to be developing a foldable Pixel phone, although reports suggest it's been delayed. What do you want to see in the Z Flip 4? Let me know in the comments. And check out the links in the description for more Samsung coverage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.